All right, so now we're gonna go over the manual muscle testing for cervical flexion. And this is different from capital in that the person is actually going to try to bring their whole head straight up to the ceiling. So kind of like a, a forward head posture as they do that. And again, uh, similar to the capital extension, you actually for the zero to two are going to completely change the motions in which they're moving. We're not gonna change their position, but we will change their motion. So for these people, the first thing that you would ask them to do is without resistance, just start at a three and see if they can do that. And you would just ask them to try, leave their shoulders on the table and then try to bring their face up towards the ceiling without tilting their head forwards or backwards. There shouldn't be any like of this kind of rotation going on, just straight up to the ceiling. Go for it. Yep. Yeah, just like that. See how it needs to be nice and flat and then back down? And if they can do that, that is a three, okay? And then from here, what we would do is we would go to a four and then a five. Now we need to have a stability hand and you need to tell the patient where you're going to put your stability hand on the patient because they may or may not be comfortable with this. You are going to take one of your hands and you need to put it on their upper chest. Also, make sure that you don't put it on their throat. The throat is not the place to put your stability hand. So it's a good idea to find their clavicles and then make sure that I kind of make like a V where my hands are basically, my fingers and my thumb are kind of along their clavicles and then just below that. So you should be north of everything that they're gonna be sensitive of, but let them know that. And then you're going to take your resistance hand and just put it right on their forehead for the four and five. And honestly, you can use the stability hand even for the three, just to give them a little bit of stability as they're bringing their head up. But again, you would just say, okay, so I'm gonna put my hand upon your chest, but it's gonna be way up on your collarbone, so it should be fine, but if you're uncomfortable, let me know. So then you would just come up top and then put your hand right on that upper part, or I usually just make the V at the base of their neck because then you're not pushing like right on this sensitive area where they're swallowing and everything. And then again, you could ask them to do the three if you wanted, and then for the four, they're gonna come up and they're gonna come up as high as they can, but for a four, you're either not gonna have max uh, range of motion or at least not max resistance. One or both of those is gonna happen. So go ahead and come up. And either I'm not gonna be pushing as hard or, go ahead and go back down, she's not gonna be able to come up through the full motion again. So she would come up and you'd be resisting, but maybe she only gets a little bit up off the table with resistance, okay? And so, you would look at that and then we would do a five. And so it's the same hand placement for your stability hand, same hand placement for your resistance hand for the five. And then you would ask them to come up and face right towards the ceiling and be able to resist it nice and solid and they'd be able to hold it. And when they can do that, great, then they can go back down. Now, when we go back down to the zero to two, again, this is where we get different. So if they can't come all the way up into that forward head position for the three, instead of having them try to come off the table, we're gonna to switch to rotation. So for this, what you would have them do for rotation is you would put your fingers on their sternocleidomastoids because those are gonna be our big rotators, right? Just very gently find where they're at and what you would ask them to do is try to maximally turn their head as far as they can to both sides. They need to do this bilaterally. And as long as they can go through at least part, if not all of the motion, that's what we're looking for for a two. So I would say, please rotate your head to the right, and then please rotate your head to the left. And as long as they can go through at least some of this motion and I can feel some good muscle activity, that's a two. If I ask her to do it again, and I can only feel muscle activity, so I can tell she's putting forth effort, but there's no head motion or very, very little head motion, like just kind of like a little tilt thing, then that's gonna be our two, and then, or sorry, our one, and then our zero would be, I would be feeling on the SEMs, and there would be no motion at all. And the other thing to remember, people, is that as you rotate, remember your SEMs rotate you to the opposite side. So I asked her to rotate to the right first, so her left SCM was what was contracting, and then when I asked her to rotate to the left, it was her right SCM that was contracting. So that's what you should really be looking for as you're doing this particular test, okay?